Before we start talking about the subject matter of this video, I wanted to just take a quick minute and say thank you to all my subscribers and all those people out there who've left uh, thumbs up and comments and send out thank yous, things along those lines. I, I really greatly appreciate those. Um, that is what is keeping me making these videos. But seeing your guys' reactions and appreciation makes me want to keep making more and more videos. So keep that up. I do appreciate it greatly. Thank you again. So we're going to talk about turning tapers. And there are a variety of ways to do it. Um, the shirt line is fairly unique in that it's got the ability for the head to rotate. And that's what we're going to first start out as our, as our method of turning a taper or a chamfer. In order to do this, we have to loosen the retaining screw for the head once I manage to get the Allen key in there. Now this is just a lockdown screw and this is the first time I've removed the head. So I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna find. So the reason we have to remove the head is there is this alignment key. And that alignment key holds the head fairly square. And at least for me on the first go around, getting that key out uh, was a little bit of a bear. Now one thing you do want to, to make sure um, is I have marked which way is the top, just so that the key always goes back in in the same direction. In order for me to get it out, I began using uh, this as a fulcrum point and a fairly long hex key as a lever to try to push down on the top of the, the bar. That got it to nudge a little bit. Uh, from there, I was able to use um, a scriber, and I mean, these aren't the best ways, but it's what I had on hand and, and what worked. I was able to get a scriber in there and then use a hammer to tap it in as a wedge, and this scriber is tapered along the full length. Um, the surfaces we're concerned about are the sides. The, the top and bottom really aren't mating surfaces. There should be a, a little bit of free play in there. So if we damage the top and bottom slightly, that's not going to, to affect anything. It's the sides that we don't want to be putting any pressure or scratches or damage into. So it'll be fun to see how hard that is to get back on when that time comes. But we just take it out, set it aside, make sure you don't lose it. And then we put the head back on over that spindle and we tighten it down. Now I wanted to give you a, a closer view of the scale here. And as you can see, it's, it's incremented in five degree marks. So we're not going to be able to get super precise on here um, if that's what we're going for. For super precision, we're going to have to get to, to where we're using either a dial indicator or we could even use uh, an external protractor to probably get this a little bit closer than uh, you know five and trying to split that five degrees. But we're just going to start off with doing some rough tapers and I'm just going to go ahead and set it. And I set it to 10 degrees just so that the, the tilt would be a little bit more obvious. I'm going to bring our cutter up and make sure that before we turn the machine on we can clear. And as always put on your safety glasses. So we're going to take this slow and light to start with, let's say five thousandths. So we can see that uh, my piece is a little canted since I really didn't take the time to center it properly which doesn't matter since this is just a demo piece. But we just want to take thin light cuts, particularly since we're a fair distance out from the chuck here. And I'm just doing 10 thousandths at a pass. And as you can see with each pass, we go a little bit deeper. And because we are so far out from the chuck, we are gonna be deflecting quite a bit more. And that's really all there is to, to turning a taper or a chamfer. If you're just going for decorative purposes, um, 
or maybe there's some functional, but the angle isn't super critical there. That's the, the basics of, of how we'd go about doing that. Not too difficult. The hardest part is getting the alignment of the head correct. Along the lines of alignment, I did mention trying to use, say, an external protractor. And then just trying to register this against the, the face of the headstock and the ways of the bed. Uh, this is going to give you perhaps a little bit more fine control just because these are, are often marked with finer graduations on uh, single degrees. Now this may not be 100% perpendicular to your uh, spindle, but you'll just have to figure out what that variance is and account for it. So uh, another method that will probably get you even better accuracy, we're, we're still, we still figure out which surfaces to square off of, and I'm going to see we can do a square off of the face of our, of our saddle by using what are called angle blocks. So that's a, a 10 degree angle block there, which we already saw how we can get to 10. But these angle blocks will allow you to stack them, and so there we go to 11. Now to clear the gib on the saddle, I'd use a parallel just to give us a space. And we need that space because this, this gib protrudes out quite a bit. And as we bring that saddle up close, we will see that there's a wider gap here than up here. Um, because we roughly set it to 10 degrees, then we put in 11 degrees of block. So we could loosen the head and then pretty much just sandwich it, uh, our, our angle blocks and our parallel with the carriage and tighten it back down. And now we should be at 11 degrees. And with these angle blocks, they'll come in a set typically to where you can set anything to a one degree increment. Now if we have to go finer than one degree, that's where we're really gonna to start to need to bring in our dial indicator and measure the tapers or chamfers as it were in either inches per foot or inches per inch of variance. And that's what we'll have to do with say a Morse taper, or we can use a, a piece that we already have um, and use it as a reference to line the head up off of, and we'll show that in a later video. But my eventual goal here is to get to the point where you can turn an accurate Morris taper fairly easily, and there, there are several ways of doing it. Like I said, moving the head is, is definitely one of them. Whether that's something you want to do or not is up to you. Uh, the next way we'll look at is using what's referred to as a compound. It's an additional accessory.